Welcome to Luminescence Common Sense Spirituality, a show designed to share spiritual insights with you so that you can comprehend the universe and how it functions. You are about to experience raised consciousness. This is a place where spiritual principles are shared with the goal of assisting you to expand your understanding of both the seen and unseen worlds. Luminescence Common Sense Spirituality helps you to discern the timeless truths handed down from wise sages through the ages from the airy fairy nonsense that is being taught today. Now, here is your host, Sharon Lynn Wyeth. Welcome to Luminescence Common Sense Spirituality, the radio show that disseminates esoteric knowledge and common sense spirituality. I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth, creator of Pneumology Science, the ability to know all about a person's personality and their soul's purpose simply from the person's name. The beautiful inspirational music you just heard is from the music Shine by Dee Lemur, and it's D-L-E-M-O-R. She just released another uh, piece of music, so you can hear that from going to her website at dlemur.com. And Shine's available also on all streaming platforms, and as you know, we always end our program with her song. Now, our topic today has how to meet your guides and angels. So does everyone have guides and angels, and how many? And what is the job qualifications of the personal guides? How do they apply for the job? How do they get there? Can a guide be a guide to multiple people at the same time? And how often can you contact your guides and angels before they think you're a nuisance? And our special guest today is Lori McQuarrie. Now, Lori McQuarrie has been on the Portland and National Psychic Scene since 1985. When she was 18, she was in a horseback riding accident. Lori was in a coma for three weeks, and afterwards she awoke. Her life has never been the same. She began having dreams like newsreels on black and white film of violent plane crashes. Shockingly, a few days later, she began seeing television newsreels of these same airline disasters actually happening. Lori McQuarrie has been established as a professional psychic and has gained fame for her work in a series of notable cases. The cases range from missing persons to crime investigations. Lori's had a professional office in the Lake Oswego area in Oregon since 1985, but now is semi-retired and living in Central Oregon with her retired former police detective husband of 31 plus years. Now, I first met Lori in 1999 when she was still in Lake Oswego, Oregon, and I was across the freeway in a school administration in Beaverton, Oregon. I was astounded by both Lori's accuracy and how detailed she was, and I'm so pleased that Lori has agreed to join me the first week of every odd month right here on Luminescence Common Sense Spirituality Radio Show. So she's back again with us to talk about how do we meet our guides. Lori, welcome back to the show. Always great to have you on with me. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. A pleasure. Thank you. So how do we meet our guides and angels? You know what? I like to begin with saying, keep it simple. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we all get worked up about, you know, how can I do this? How can I do that? And in particular things that we cannot physically lay our hand on and go, here, here you go. I think we're in touch with angel guides all the time. And, it's, you know, and I tell people this, too. Take a look at the name. Guide. They're guiding us. They're not driving us. So I think if you can just relax with it, I have given workshops where I've pinpointed for people personally how there are some methodologies you can use. But don't get too hung up on the methods because everybody has an individual experience. Um, I love doing this with people under hypnosis because it's a safe way to just relax, let someone help guide you there. So if you have a hypnotist in your area, I suggest you look into that. If you don't, then we have some steps today for you to follow. But I think we're always in touch with the guides and vice versa. And, you know, don't get too hung up on the experience and the result. Because aren't we all result-driven in this society? I've got to be, you know, perfect, or I have to have absolute proof this happened. This is an individual experience. And they are called guides because, again, they're here to guide, not tell you what to do. Well, wouldn't we be giving up our free will if, if we just followed orders all the time? 
Well, heck, we don't do it anyway, do we? <laughs> Take a look <laughs> what's going on. I mean, the poor angel guides are shaking their heads, going, my God, they don't want to wear masks. What are we going to do with them? You know, I'm not getting into politics here. I'm just trying to be funny. But And there's nothing much funny about what's going on. But no, we have to have individual will and choices. But this is why I think prayer is such the perfect way, because it, it transverses any denominational thing. Prayer is prayer is prayer. When I tell people I'm going to say a prayer for their loved one or whatever, and uh, whatever's going on, and sometimes people go, well, you know, I'm, I'm this or that, and I don't believe or I do believe. You know, it just goes out to the universe, and the universe takes care of it. And I think prayer is energy. And if well, I can just send you good energy today, you know, it arrives. Well, I always think, too, that when we do our best, I, I love this saying, when we do our best, God does the rest. Yeah. So we put out the good intention, we do what we can, and then we leave it up to the universe to finish. Well, we leave it up the answer to be what the universe wants. You know, I think many of us have been through trying times where we've had people in critical conditions or tough circumstances. And, you know, you, you're praying and your your angel guides, whether you can feel or sense them or not, um, are there. They're always there. I think they accompany us from birth. I think there's many kinds. And um, I want to talk about just the four major archangel guides that I certainly am familiar with. And that was what my most of my classes were based on. But, you know... It, this is a time of you got to believe in something. So what are the four types? Well, I love that these are the names, and quickly they go. What, the method I used, and I use, again, I don't want to use the word method because people get too hung up on that, but it coincides with your astrological sign. And it's Raphael, M- Michael, Gabriel, and Ariel. Raphael is... Uh, for the air signs, and Michael is for the, um, you know, <laughs> Airy Leo said, the fire signs. There you go. There's my keyword. Gabrielle is element is water, and Ariel element is earth. And these correspond with the signs. And most people know what their astrological sign is. You know, before 1980s, if you walked up to somebody and said, what's your sign? They really weren't quite sure what you were talking about, but the 80s really introduced astrology in. So I just figured this is an easy way for people to pair up. If you're a fire sign, and I've always liked the energy of Michael, the archangel, who kicked butt, excuse me, but he did. That was his role. He was a very strong angel of just, you know, energy and balance and protection against psychic imbalance or danger to the patients and the dismantling of old and beginning of new. That's what he stands for. So even if one began with the archangel that's connected to your astrological sign, at least it's a beginning and let it just unfold. That's really interesting because when I do my prayers, those are the four angels that I call in. Good. Well, I think we've probably got many, many angels, and I wouldn't want to get overwhelmed. I I have a very little, somebody gave me a a wonderful little stone with a picture of Michael on it, white, with him engraved on it, just a teeny little thing, about the size of a 50-cent piece. I carry it in my purse, along with my medicine bag that was given to me many years ago, and it's mine. And, you know, I don't show it to anybody, and this I usually don't reveal much about it, but I feel very comfortable sharing it with you and your audience. You know, even if you have a little reminder of something with you, and it just, it's comforting to me. So, and that's what counts. So does everybody have guides and angels, and yes. do they all have, like, one, or how can you tell how many? Well, my dear, I think some people need more than others. I, and I don't mean that in a sarcastic way, but, you know, we we well, look at people with criminal elements. Look at the people who don't live happily, let's put it that way. I think their angel guides work overtime. 
because what they're doing is guiding, trying to get through. You know, every soul chooses its path. And like I said, I really believe we have at least one major archangel that comes in with us when we're born. And I I wish I could make it, you know, crystal clear, but I can't because every person's experience is different. I've had people tell me, you know, when I was a little kid, there used to be this white light that came in my room and just sat at the end of the bed. I've had a couple of people tell me that, more than a couple, and it didn't frighten them. They felt it was comforting. And usually these were people who had traumatic childhoods. Wow. So when you think about the enormity of that, geez, think about these kids in the world now, what they're going through in many countries, one in particular. But, you know, we have they're all getting a shot at this, getting to be here on the earth plane again. And I like to think that even if my kids, my grandkids, great-grandkids, which I have now, I have an accompaniment of protection and love. When you're not with them, it soothes you. It does me, because I know they're in the hands of the universe. Is there a method that you could give to us, like if somebody wanted to start meeting their guides and didn't feel like they had, um, how they could start? Well, just for curiosity's sake, I went online to see what the Internet offered up. And it's kind of interesting, and it was somewhat similar. Uh, there's a couple of YouTube inter- inter- you know, things you can look at, um, very qualifying. I think you have to find your own best method. I think simple is best. And I think don't get hung up on the results. You're, you're in the experience. In class, I would have people visualize. I'd put them in a relaxation. And all that is is just a talking down. You know, 1 to 10, relaxation. You can count yourself from uh, 10 to 1. And what you want to just emphasize is peace and quiet. Please don't do it when the kids are running through the house. Uh, take the phone off the hook or whatever it takes. And don't pace it. In other words, don't sit there and go, well, I'm going to do this for about 20 minutes, and man, if I don't see something, then I'm giving up. Some people have said that to me. Don't do that. Carve out an open place of time and space that's quiet for you. Some people find a place outside. I know a couple of people have told me, you know, I go out in my garden, take my chair and sit. Whatever is comforting to you, it might be your own bedroom, but relax. And gosh, what do you do? Well, you send out the invitation. And it's simple, it's straightforward, and it's called Angel Guides, one or all of you. I would love to feel your presence. And you have to learn and practice this a bit because you've got to empty your mind. Most of us can get into that mode of, okay, now I'm relaxed and I'm only concentrating on this, and then here comes that dang, you know, electric bill overdue floating over your head. We, we're human. So don't be hard on yourself. If you, it's the first few tries, it's not perfect. Nothing is except God in the universe. We're not. You know, my dad from the other side used to tell me that I was being redundant when I talked with him and they could hear everything. So would, <laughs> couldn't it just be as simple as saying, okay, angel guide, whomever you are, I'm speaking to the one that is with me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You just, and then just start. talk so the person's in the room. I used to have people concentrate uh, on just seeing a door. And I'd say, make it any door you want. It can be fancy, modern, old, but here's a door. And behind this door is your spirit guide. When that door opens, you are going to feel the presence. I think feeling the presence is even more important than seeing we get very hung up on the visual and people have visually seen stuff at times but in the beginning it's usually more of a sensation of energy and feeling okay Okay, so you're going to get a good laugh at this one Lori I used to enable to connect with spirit guides when I was first starting because I was still in junior high 
I used to imagine that I had sets of wings coming out of my back and that I had to tuck them in when I went through a doorway because if not, they'd go crash and they wouldn't let me through. And then I would just pretend all day long that I was wearing this set of wings. And then I would say, Angel guides, don't you want your wings back? They're really not good on me. <laughs> You've got to talk to me to come get them. <laughs> I'm thinking those guys had to have a big laugh with you. <laughs> that, that is beautiful. And I'll tell you why. I like the simplicity of it, the connectedness, because that's what the guides really want to create, you feeling connected. And, you know, I've, I'm sure we've all heard and read of stories of people having encounters unknowingly, not expecting it. The strongest one I heard was a woman driving her car, I guess she was driving, and maybe her husband was, but suddenly they both heard a voice that said, get over to the left. And there was a car coming straight at them that they hadn't seen a moment before that saved their lives. And they believe that was the guide. Well, you know, I like to think these poor guides work overtime. Sometimes people don't listen. Sometimes they don't get the message. And, you know, I kind of like, I, and I do think they have a sense of humor. I think the universe has a sense of humor. I would imagine maybe they have meetings afterward where they've had to work with a difficult group. <laughs> they, have to, they have to shore each other up. It's like group therapy. I mean, you know, they were all human once. No, and there are guy, there are angel guides that have never touched the earth plane as human. But for the most part, the ones that care and love us uh, are people we've known. When I'm doing a session, and I tell people prior beforehand to warn them, you know, your angel guide may come through. The person you loved as a child, they are now angelic, and they are taking care of you. And by golly, that person will come through with a name so that the person getting the reading gets validation. Uh, they'll give me a description. You know, this person used to read you stories when you were five, and I can give them actuals. I don't take the credit. I just listen good, and I can repeat pretty good. And when people get that connectedness, even through a reading, it makes all the difference, especially like you just mentioned, your dad being gone. You know, yeah. it's just like a warm smile when you talk to somebody that can relate for you what that person is trying to come through with. Well, you do it yourself, and I think everybody can hear their own guides. Just to sit still and listen to what comes in. Well, we're going to find out more about guides and their job qualifications. How do they become a personal guide right after this break? Stay tuned. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4pm Pacific Time, 7pm Eastern Time every Thursday and together we can discover what's really going on. Mark Twain said the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. The why is hidden in your name. Sharon Lynn Wyeth has created a scientific way of deciphering your name to reveal your contract for this lifetime. 
and your name even specifies the seven areas that are subsets of your soul's overall goal. Your name identifies who you are to both yourself and others. What does your name say about you? Contact Sharon Lynn Wyatt at info at knowthename.com for your stunning name review. These are the sounds of a dinner. A dinner that almost didn't happen. A dinner now served thanks to people like you. Due to COVID-19, 17 million more Americans may face hunger. Feeding America is helping our neighbors in need. And if you're able, you can too. Donations are being accepted at feedingamerica.org slash coronavirus. Brought to you by the Ad Council and Feeding America. 200 food banks strong. Welcome back to Luminescence, Common Sense Spirituality. You are with Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and our special guest today is Lori McQuarrie, and we're talking about angels and your guides. You know, right before the break, Lori, we were talking about how you can hear your guides or how you can hear your angels, and I think a lot of people are hearing guides and don't even realize it, because... If you don't interrupt yourself in your own thinking, you think in a stream, but sometimes you're thinking along and then all of a sudden there's a break and then your thought changes to something else. And I just feel like that's your guidance coming in and saying, well, while you're thinking, consider this. What, how do you feel about that? Well, I agree with that. You know, I was sitting here thinking while the break was going on about what we had just, atta- you know, attacked and looked at there. Um <laughs> You know, I think these guides, it's interesting because you said, what are their job qualifications? I immediately went to the Angel Job Corps. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I thought, you know, if all these folk that are angels now um, have lived, then they're pretty human and still in a lot of ways. I think you and I should write the children's book called The Reluctant Angel. Oh, wouldn't that be fun? Well, I'm serious. I mean, I think kids would resonate with it. We each have an angel guide. We have more than one. I think we have uh, different ones for different settings. And I think that all you have to do to begin with is believe. That's the, that's the start, really, is just believe in the possibility. You know, some people are a little bit harder to convince than others. And... I don't want to try to convince something to a person if they're not interested, but I think people are genuinely fascinated with the, the creation idea that here is something that goes between two worlds. You know, the Native Americans have beautiful connectedness to their elders, which are guides, and they talk to them and, you know, do all kinds of wonderful ceremonial things to stay in contact with them. And I just think most people do that to a degree. Your mom or dad passes or a favorite uncle or, you know, whoever, and you think about them and send them good thoughts and miss them, and you talk to them. Well, just because you haven't been formally introduced yet to your angel guide doesn't mean you won't have that same connection. And I think you begin by just believing. So is there a certain qualification or level of consciousness or achievement of some sort that somebody has to have before they can become an angel guide? You know, I've never filled out the application form, and I'm not ready to. (laughs) So to to answer your question, you know, I I think they skipped the paperwork over there. I think that, and that's, I'm, I wasn't kidding about the title, The Reluctant Angel. It suddenly came to me. Because, you know, we've seen movies made about some of this stuff. Well, in order, God says, supposedly in the movie, to the person, in order to redeem yourself, you're going to have to go back down earth and, and be an angel person again and and work this out. Well, maybe it is part of, you know, uh uh, fixing your past because you volunteer to be a, a, an angel guide and try to help people. I don't know if it's that way. I think it's just an automatic transference. You know, excuse me, but would you want Adolf Hitler for your angel guide? Of course not. 
And maybe he's really healed everything by now. I sure hope so. He had a lot to atone for. But I'm saying there's people who pass over who definitely are unqualified before they ever get there. So I think what we have to trust is the universe sends each of us the guide we need. Okay. If if each of us are sent the guide we need, could it do do you think most people have more than one? Or Absolutely. do you think one's the average? My God, I don't think one poor angel could handle it all, would you? I mean, <laughs> they got to have days off. Um, you know, I, I think there's an approximation of it. You know, I think the more spiritual a person is, probably the less they need the multitude. I think when we're young and dumb, like most of us are at one point in our lives and making mistakes, Yes, I think we have people who've passed over check in on us. And I think, I, I like to think maybe the angels have job categories. There's one that specializes in teenagers. Gosh, I don't know where that angel was when my kids were in teens, but it sure would have been helpful if I'd listened to more. So, what if they're specialty angels? I'm sure there could well be. Well, interesting. So. Can, can I, I tell can, you quickly about an experience yeah. I had years ago working in an intensive care unit? Sure. I was doing this work on the side, teaching auras at that particular time. I was teaching classes in auras. And, of course, auras is the energy surrounding the body. comes in colors. You can see it once you know what to look for kind of thing. I was standing at the desk doing paperwork and looking around the unit, and it was a fairly good size intensive care unit. And, of course, they do let people in to visit on occasion. I remember looking across the room and just casually looking at patients and who was visiting, and right across from me, oh, about 50 feet away, was a man standing, and I think he was a priest. Not sure. I think I remember, you know, the proper garb he had on. He had no aura. And I remember that immediately, thinking, oh, my God, because a person's aura will disappear totally two to three days before their death. That is a given. This was not the case. And the weird part was, this man's back was to me. He was standing with a couple other people. He suddenly whooped around and just stared at me. And I wasn't the only nurse in the room, but he looked at me. I wasn't afraid. I just thought, oh, my God, this person is not of the earth plane, but he's okay. I mean, I can't explain to you. I was not afraid. His stare was intense, but it wasn't menacing. And then he turned back to the patient. I think I saw an angel. That's what I felt. And it stuck with me. And you'd be surprised how spiritual an IT intensive care unit can become. I told a couple other nurses about it, and they had seen him as well, and they both said, I don't know, we had a funny feeling, even though he was dressed as a priest. You yeah. never know is my bottom line here. So you never know when you're, you know, angels unaware, that saying. You know, sometimes I think the universe uses people, people that are earth, you know, they're people. But sometimes that angelic presence may come into them for a few moments just to carry over into the situation. I don't know. I don't know all these answers. I know that you have to listen to your inner voice and let it guide you. And they're out there. I trust them. And I've often thought, my gosh, you know, what if they do walk among us, just as people occasionally, just to put us at ease and to help us out? Because I've heard people say to other people at a dramatic moment when they did something, you're an angel. Well, maybe that's not so far-fetched. Interesting. That's interesting. No, I think it always, it always is a good uh, bottom line of just... Treat everybody well. <laughs> yeah, just never, be kind. You can be kind because you never know. You know, you may have an angel checking up on you. I, you know, I don't. I I don't like to get too hung up on it. I I believe it, 
and I've seen some strange things. Um, I I live out here in the, in the the farmland kind of, and I had a full blown spirit Native American man walk right through my bedroom about six months ago, solid as can be, never looked at me. He was dressed in deerskin, wasn't a warrior, peaceful man. And afterward, it happened so fast. But afterward, I thought, God, would he have seen me if he'd looked up? He was walking, concentrated. Afterward, it didn't even take 30 seconds. He just walked right through. I thought, my God, I think I've seen an angel. I think I've seen somebody to reassure me with just their presence that I'm being watched over. And I want to tell everybody out there in the audience, you all have that all the time. Just relax. You'll be reassured and you'll be given a sign. All you have to do is be open and believe. You know, I do believe very thoroughly that we are watched over. And in this particular time period in our history, I constantly remind myself that I chose to be here at this time. This was not an accident, and that each and every one of us chose to be here at this time, that we wanted to be on the playing field and not in the spectator ring. Right. That's taking responsibility for your your life. And once you begin Mm -hmm. with that premise, that's how you'll live it, and that's how you change the outcome of the better things coming to you, because you stop feeling like you're a victim. Right. Can a guide be a guide to multiple people at one time, or is it just singular that there's a one-in-one matchup? You know, I think they get around. And why not? They can. You know, they don't have to make reservations. They don't have to take, <laughs> take, they don't take the bus. Um, you know, I think I kind of like to think I have a couple of spirit guides that, you know, uh, just kind of really check on me. But you know, I think they can be everywhere, in particular in this troubled, troubled time on the earth plane. I would imagine they're working overtime, just trying to reassure people. You know, talking about they don't have to take the bus. When my aunt passed, she loved to travel, but she hated making the reservations and finding the hotel room and all of that stuff. And she always had a great sense of humor. And when she crossed over after she was there for about two months, I checked in and said, so how do you like where you are now? And she goes, I love it. You think of a place and you're there. there. There's no reservations. <laughs> there's no hotel rooms. There's no, she goes, you can travel anywhere. And it's so easy. <laughs> I know. And I'm looking forward to that. That's, that's profoundly wonderful. <laughs> you know, but I thought, wow, for being able to convey anything, that's what she chose to convey. Yeah. Well, what I, let me mention one more thing. You know, the people who see spirit guides the easiest are children because they have that filter removed. You know, I had an interesting thought on the guides the other day simply because of what somebody else was saying that I was talking with. And they literally said, that, that you know, like I talk spiritually to my grandchildren each night, okay? And this one a very psychic friend of mine literally said, you know, your youngest grandchild sees, you know, thinks she has a, a spiritual friend, you know, that she mm-hmm. sees that spiritual friend on occasions. And my friend says to me, and isn't she going to be surprised when she realizes the next time you get to see her that that's you every time coming to see her? And it's not just an invisible friend, it's somebody that's real, but you come visit her. Ah. And I thought, isn't that an interesting thought? Yes, it is. That we could be in our thoughts, because I always say, from the part of me that knows how to do this to the part of my grandchildren that know how to receive this, I want you to know I'm here for you and I love you. You know, and you guys are wonderful. And So you're an angel in training is what you're telling me. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I still need a lot of help. <laughs> anyway, but wouldn't that be interesting if the spirit guides or the the secret people that our children see when they're young, if they're just simply relatives that live at a distance that yeah. absolutely love them? Well, you know, I can remember being about seven, and it was a common thing in those days. I told my grandma, who I lived with for quite a while, you know, I have a friend. And, of course, you can't see her 
and I think now that was probably my angel guide, one of them. And I could see her. And my grandma was very good. She never said, oh, stop that nonsense, like a lot of people do to poor kids. She just, you know, she just said, really, what's her name? I mean, she talked to me about her. So I think that used to, like I said, I remember that being very commonplace when I was a kid. People always said, oh, my daughter, my son has a little companion in spirit and laughed about it. Well, they're always there. But kids don't look with anything but innocence and acceptance, and that's why they could see spirit so well. Well, I always thought that those wonderful spirit guides were fabulous because, like, if when both of my children are only 14 months apart, and I remember, like, I'd be in the middle of doing dishes and one of them would wake up, and I would literally say out loud, play with your spirit guide a little bit longer. Let me just finish the dishes and I'll come get you. Perfect. <laughs> you Perfect. know, it was like, oh, please take care of this because your mom needs just another few minutes. <laughs> That's right. Well, and, you know, I think it's good also for the parent because you're reassured that, yeah, your kid needs watching still. But, you know, there's always that wonderful comforting sense that it's a relative you've known or somebody that you felt close to who cares enough to be checking in on your children. Yeah, what a nice thought. When we come back from this next break, we're going to talk about how often to contact our guides and if they ever think that we're a nuisance because we're doing it too often. Stay tuned to find out. We'll be right back. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Vox Novus, the new voice. Vox Novus, the new dimension. Vox Novus, thought and movement leaders who will share from their experience and offer tools to help us navigate our rapidly changing world. My name is Victor Furman. Join me every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Own Times Radio for Vox Novus, the new voice. Are you feeling lost, confused, absolutely clueless? No way out, over, under, or through? Then it's time to have the Light Keepers, through their conduit, Sharon Lynn Wyeth, guide you by shining their light, illuminating the right path for you. Let Sharon share the wisdom of the ancient masters to guide you on what is coming next for you and to show you the silver lining in your current circumstances. Contact Sharon Lynn Wyeth at info at knowthename.com for a joyful, info-packed Light Keepers session. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to Luminescence, Common Sense Spirituality. You are with Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and our guest today is Lori McQuarrie. You can reach Lori through her website. It is Lori, spelled the normal way, L-A-U-R-I-E. And McQuarrie is M C. And then Q-U-A-R-Y. So again, it's lauriemacquarie.com. If you'd like to have a session with Lori, that's the easiest and fastest way to reach her. So, Lori, how often can we contact our guides and angels before they think we're a pest? You know, it's not like email. Um, I think, you know, at least on email they can shut you off. Um, no, they're, not. they're always available. And it isn't just their job, it's their love. You know, I was just listening to your promotional stuff there, the light keepers. That's what they are. They're keeping our lights on. They're keeping us going. And they love doing it. 
And, you know, I used to, I have joked because I've said, I've talked to God and said, here I am again. And I know this is the third time today, but, you know, I, I think we really feel sometimes we're imposing. It is never. It is never. They welcome it. I think the people who are of a concern to them are the ones who don't seek. Oh, How would you like to be a guide to somebody that isn't getting it and is angry? and furious, and doing things they shouldn't be doing. That would be very frustrating. I think that's far more frustrating than us going, knock, knock, I have another question. You know, because they're available to us, and they love us. So let's not worry that we're imposing, because it never happens. It's They want the best for us. Well, I remember one of the first times after my dad had passed over, and when I contacted him, and he told me, he says, oh, I ran into two of your guides. They think they've got an easy job. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a relief. <laughs> you know, and I laughed, and I said, yeah, well, I don't want it to be too easy. I want them working harder on my behalf. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, you know, I think, and if you can just relax with it, all of them, um, they come and make their presence known. And to me, it's comforting. Prayer is, is comforting. It isn't a religious process. It's me talking to God in the universe, and the universe composed of guides. And I trust. I really trust, and I think that's what the basis you trust, because you trust that you're really your dad you're talking to. You trust that he's giving you the information that you need. And trust is a major component of making that contact with maybe only one guide for a while. You know, I don't think they want to overwhelm us. Tom, Dick, and Harry are here. They all want to talk to you. No, I think that there is probably one guide in particular that is on a daily thing with you. And perhaps there's others who come in for emergency meetings. I don't know. And I'm not trying to make fun, but I do think the universe has a sense of humor. Oh, I do, too, and I love that picture that's out there of laughing Jesus, you know, yeah. to remind us that, that everybody's human in one form well, or another if they've got one of these bodies, and, yeah. that, and it's nice to have fun. You know, Lori, I think that's what's missing in today's environment. I don't hear as much laughter as I used to hear. Well, that's a profound statement because people don't feel like laughing. And yet, laughter is one of the best medicines you'll ever take because it brings all the endorphins in that are correct and it makes you feel better. And I agree with you. That's why I think if you don't feel like laughing, then treat yourself to sit down and turn on your TV if you still have one or whatever you watch movies on and find a good old movie that just made you roar. Give yourself permission to relax and to laugh because there is still laughter in the world. See, that's what I always thought Jerry Lewis films were always really good for. I didn't yeah. care how silly they seemed at different times. I always thought they were funny. Yes. Well, I like Robin Williams. And oh, yeah, know, that's another good one. I mean, oh, my God. He was hysterical. And, you know, you could go on and on. A lot of the greats have passed over, but we got their movies. And what I love about a movie is you lose yourself in it. You can put aside that worry, that concern, and just watch the movie. And uh, my husband and I love that movie, My Cousin Vinny, with Joe Pesci, where he plays the lawyer who's getting these cousins of his off for a bogus charge down in, in South in Alabama or said, oh my God, it is funny. And we, we've probably watched it now when it's been back on again at least five or six times. And, you know, it's pretty bad when you can quote the actor before they say what they're going to say <laughs> because you've seen it so much. But, you know, find a movie that you can identify with and give that your permission to just, I'm not watching news today, I'm not going to be any more depressed today about what's going on. I'm going to sit down and watch a movie. And if you got a popcorn maker, use it. You know, is there anything about angels and guides that you think would be helpful for us to know that I have not asked? 
I just want people to just accept the fact that they're always present. You don't have to call upon them. You do the calling to make you feel good. They're always there. And I think I've told you, you know, I have a meditation that I made up when, for myself when I was having breast cancer and going through all that process. I still say it today. It takes like 30 seconds to say, but I feel a presence when I even speak that. I know I'm being heard. So find something to connect to your guides by just talking to them. And, you know, you can call a daily meeting if you want, if that, you know, whatever makes you feel grounded in it. But they're always, they're here. And I just remind people they're here to guide. That's the name. They're not here to tell you. They're here to guide you through and protect you. And there's times we don't cooperate. There's times we don't listen. And we'll get a message back about that if you're paying attention. Well, maybe that's similar to parents. There's times we don't listen to them either. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> well, and and yet, you know, I, I I do feel sorry for guides because I think, God, you got to get frustrated sometimes because people don't get it. And, you know, how many times you got to get it to get it <laughs> whenever the message is you're supposed to be receiving. But for the most part, I just think it's such challenging times right now that just utilizing the belief that you have guides, that they're present, and yes, I think they do make their, their way to, to show us. You know, um, angelic happenings is what I call it. And I have things here in the house that get moved or are changed that I don't have any little kids running around, nobody's touching stuff. I just kind of think they're trying to get my attention again. Okay, so I'll pay more attention. And I sit down and talk to them. Just talk to your guides as though they're right there in the room. And they wow. are. They're listening. And what is really nice is remind people that there is particular angels that take the night shift. Oh, I love that. How do we know that's not their day shift? <laughs> well, it's our <laughs> night shift. We're sleeping. And I, I like to think that, you know... I'm being watched even as I sleep in particular, because that's when we're most vulnerable. It's when we're asleep. Oh, is it? I'm sorry? Are we the most vulnerable when we're sleeping? I Well, I think because, oh. you know, the mortality of it. I mean, you're vulnerable because you don't have all your senses attuned. It, they're resting. And I think that's when we're in a receivership. That's why dreams are important. I always tell people, please, first thing in the morning when you wake up, don't move. Calculate what you had for a dream. Uh, if you can, write it down, but don't get out of bed and rush for your coffee. Think about it. Let it kind of assimilate in your body. Yeah, that's when we're in receivership. So, you know, we don't have our guard up when we're sleeping, and that's when I think our angels can come in, talk to us. Oh, isn't that interesting? I always felt like that's when we became like the scarecrow out in the field, and some part of us was out there going, oh, don't come now, don't come now, scaring you away. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah but I, I think it's it's a vulnerability that is safe. And yes. if you really accept the fact that you're always protected, always, then that will make all the difference. Because I think when we have troubled sleep, I think if we have too much, you know, alcohol before we go to bed, if we do anything to disrupt that, then that that's problematic. But when you go to bed like a little kid and you're 57 or whatever, you trust there's a trust that you're opening up to the universe and your angel guides saying, take care of me. Bring in the messages while I'm sleeping. Let me be open to them and let me listen. You know, that's really a comforting thought, Lori. Lori, tell us again how we can get a hold of you. Oh, you can get a hold of me at, and uh, it's just a tiny correction, but on the uh, website, it's Lori underscore. Macquarie at M. Oh, that's important for me to know. I know, I know. And so I didn't want to interrupt you before when you were saying it. 
it's easy to, to overlook. So anyway, they can email me. Uh, there is a phone number, 541-548-5211, and that is a message business phone. And as I tell people, I will always call you back. It might take a day or two, depends on how busy I am. I will always return the call. Thank you, as always, for being here, Lori. Thank you, dear. You have a wonderful day, and you're all of your audience. I wish everybody a wonderful, safe, guide-filled day. Thank you. You know, next week, we're going to have Sandy Anastasi back on, and she will be talking about the seven rays and the attributes of the seven rays and how we can identify and know which of the rays that we are most closely aligned with or which ones we traveled here on. So that ought to also be an interesting show. Um, Also, I would like to remind everybody that we close every show with the music Shine by D. Lamore. It's D. L-E-M-O-R dot com. And as always, I am so appreciative that you've chosen to spend your time with us here at Luminescence Common Sense Spirituality. This is Sharon Lynn Wyeth signing off. See you.